Well, a warm welcome. It's Thursday the 30th of September and I was just doing a job out of town for a few days, so thank you for sticking with me. Now, at the risk of boring everyone, I'm going to do some more on this point about non-aspiration of injections because there's some really interesting stuff come up and a lot of it's come from you, actually. So um, I want to integrate that with a bit of research. Let's just start off with a quick blast of uh, video here. This purports to be uh, an educational video. Hopefully we'll bring this pandemic to an end. It's really exciting to be a part of that. I know our whole team is really excited about that prospect, just to be able to be out there and to help in some way, to help our lives return to normal. Now, this is not a comment on UW Health. Um, it's, it's a public domain video, so we're quite, uh, I'm quite comfortable to put it there. Uh, check on the link for yourself. But, um, and to be fair, they are just following their national guidelines. So um, there you go. Um, but of course, they didn't aspirate, which to me, I just find it very disconcerting to watch that they didn't pull back to see if there's any blood. Now, let's look at this now in a little bit of detail with your comments. Now, Ergo writes in, I checked the Australian Immunisation Handbook and uh, incredibly, this is item five under intramuscular injections. So this is from the Australian government. Now, this is what they say. Um, it is not necessary to draw back on the syringe plunger before injecting a vaccine. However, if you have done this and a flash of blood appears in the needle, in the needle hub, withdraw the needle and select a new site for injection. So, you know, if you get that, um, let, 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 me, let me know because it doesn't make any sense to me. So they're saying it's not necessary to do it. But if you do see blood, take it out and start again. It just doesn't seem to make any sense at all, actually. So Ergo says, so the technique I was taught decades ago, which you have taught since, since uh, has been quietly retired. So th this practice seems to have changed and, and no one's quite sure why. At least I'm not quite sure why. And uh, er er Ergo's not quite sure why. Now, um, this is a good question from Mom. Um, now, basically what Mom is asking here is she's saying, well... Um, what, what's, ha what's happening is that you're saying that this is caused by inadvertent intravascular administration. So why does it happen mostly in young men? Um, what, why doesn't ev everyone get in inadvertent uh, intravascular administration? Well, of course, everyone will get a proportion of in inadvertent intravascular administration is the answer to that. Um, so this doesn't explain why it's mostly happening in adoles to adolescent and young males. Matter of fact, the narrow demographic almost excludes your reasoning here unless you're saying that only males are getting accidental IV vaccines. So um, good, good, quest, good question, Mum. But what we're saying is that this is one of several factors. And what we need is two or three unlucky factors to arise. So the fact that it might be younger men, the fact that they might have a metabolic change, that so, only some of them might have that metabolic change. Some of them might have that predisposition to, to inflammatory heart disease and it's given intravenously. If all those things line up, then they could get it. Now, let me just give, give, give you a slightly uh, fuller explanation Mom, on that one. US military, um, 23 male patients, 20 after the second dose. We know this is more common after the second dose, this myocarditis problem. Uh, 2.8 million doses of mRNA um, vaccines given. So, so that's one case in 121,000. And I'm estimating that the number of inadvertent, we don't know this for sure, but I'm estimating that the, the inadvertent intravascular administration probably happens one in every few thousand injections. So we can see we need other factors as well as that. It's not just this single factor as a single cause. Or another US series, uh, 20 had vaccine-related myocarditis, 37 had pericarditis. That's 57 patients in total. And that was from over 2 million individuals vaccinated. So that's one in 35,092 on that particular series. And of course, the references always are there for you to check. I'm not making this up. If this isn't evidence-based, it's not worth anything. Now, a little bit about what people are saying about the Centers for Disease Control. And, and this is direct quotes, so aspiration before injection of vaccine or toxoids, so like tetanus toxoid, which is a kind of vaccine, really. I.e. pulling back on the syringe plunger after the needle is inserted, but before injection is not necessary because no large blood vessels are present at the recommended injection sites. Um, I'm sure that's true in the vast majority of people, but not in everyone. 
An approach that includes aspiration might be more painful for infants. Well, sorry, CDC. I, I thought we were giving these mostly to uh, people over the age of 12 at the moment and predominantly to adults. So really quite why that is informing uh, the, the practice on the video that we've just seen, which is, to be fair, following national guidelines. I just don't get it. Uh, we're well, we missing something here. Uh, this is from the Green Book Immunisation Procedures. That should be in green, but my, I haven't got a colour printer. Um, the Green Book, Chapter 4, um, says this. Um, it clearly states, unambiguously, vaccines should not be given intravenously. So this is a direct quote from the Green Book. Vaccines should not be given intravenously. But if you stick the, if you stick the needle into a muscle... And you don't aspirate. How do you know whether that tip of that needle there, that tip of that needle is in a vein or not? Well, you don't. So they say vaccines should not be given intravenously. We agree. And then they say it is not necessary to aspirate the syringe after the needle is introduced into the muscle. Again, this makes as much sense as the Australian guidelines. It doesn't make any sense at all to me. But this is the national guidelines. And this is what people go by. Now, a lot of this, I've, I've been doing, doing a bit of a bit of my investigative journalism bit on this. And if you trace back the literature to the references, to the previous references, to the previous reference, references. And as we saw, this is this is the, the current edition of the Green Book here in the UK. And they're actually quoting WHO 2004 and Polkington and Osterin, which is a standard vaccine, vaccination handbook 2004. So it's 2021 now. And they're quoting references for this practice that are 2004. Now, mRNA vaccines didn't exist in 2004. And adenovirus vector vaccines didn't exist in 2004. In fact, they didn't exist until 2020, last year. So why are they not changing the recommendations? Because we've developed new types of vaccines. Right. Uh, but this goes back to, I think a lot of this goes back to the WHO, Section 5.4, Immunisation and Practice. Now, this is this document here. Um, very extensive, very thorough, crammed full of really good stuff. Um, largely focused, to be fair, on vaccination of um, children. Um, the, there's a, there's a weeks, weeks of reading there if you, if, you want to go, if you want to go through it. I'll put the reference in, obviously. Free, free download, free PDF which is great. Um, but the point is, I'm not going to scroll through it all by any means, but but basically the same for intramuscular injections, gently stretch and support the skin between thumb and forefinger, push the entire needle in at 90 degrees angle with a quick, smooth action. We agree 100% WHO. Uh, for all injections, depress the plunger slowly and smoothly, taking care not to move the syringe around, which we agree with 100%. But what about the bit in between? They do not say it is necessary to aspirate. They do not say it is not necessary to aspirate. And it's the same for the guidance for immunising uh, adults from the WHO. They simply ignore it. Just ignored. How, how can they just ignore that bit? And everyone seems to follow along from the World Health Organisation as if they're some sort of tablets of stone chiselled out from, from the mountain. It's, um, it's a bit depressing the way everyone just seems to relatively blindly follow the WHO and in, in this case they just haven't to me it looks like they just haven't done a thorough job this looks slapdash to me I'm greatly unimpressed now clinicians who got blood uh this is this is from you this is from Deborah registered nurse all these are comments on the last uh, video that we did a few years ago uh, I aspirated and got blood in return there you go. I was shocked as it had never happened before, but confirmed the importance of aspiration. So here we have a registered nurse who got aspirated blood. Here we have J.H., hospital corpsman in the Navy, uh, retired, I believe now. I gave thousands of shots over four years of duty. We were taught always to aspirate when giving intramuscular shots. Every person I see on TV or Internet never aspirated before the injection. I agree, J.H. entirely. There were many times I hit a vein and had to retract the needle and try again. So again, these are clinicians talking here. Many times it happened to JH. Um, 
When do they, where do they find these people who are given the injections? McDonald's, or is there just no training for this job? Nothing, nothing wrong with working at McDonald's, but you don't necessarily want them to do your injections. Now, I was actually talking to um, a friend of mine who's a registered nurse, actually, a couple of days ago. And she, she'd been for a booster dose. And she got into conversation with the person giving the vaccine. And it turns out that they were a student social worker. Now, this really needs questioned. I mean, I, I could train a class of my third year student nurses up, a 30 of them in a few hours, to, to, to give these vaccines safely. But why aren't we using third year student nurses instead of student social workers? We're using student social workers to give injections. Uh, well, I, I just don't think it's appropriate. If you're listening, British government. Now, this is a uh, Ivash Nash, paediatrician. Nurses in the UK don't aspirate in spite of requests, which is scary. Young adults have more chances of myocarditis. They have turgid blood vessels. So, so uh, Ivash Nash is saying here the blood vessels might be sort of more turgid, sort of stiffer uh, wall, more, more not stiffer, but more elastic, more expanded walls in young people. So there's a better chance of the tip of the needle ending up in a blood vessel thereby giving an intravenous uh, injection is what he's saying and that does make perfect sense and it's a point I hadn't thought about so thank you for that uh, but what I have certainly seen uh, abnormal radial artery is known pulses felt on the, uh, the opposite side of the wrist as usual that happens I've seen that so uh, inside every body abnormal position blood vessels or extra blood vessels are possible this is called anatomical variation and of course it happens I came across flank, frank blood while giving vaccines. I had to remove the needle and discard the injection. This is a paediatrician talking, remember. Uh, once it was MMR and the other was typhoid vaccines. Although rare, it can be fatal as well. Don't like the sound of that, um, Avanish, uh, but thank you for telling us. When, I got my, when my son got Pfizer vaccine twice in England, uh, Sta uh, Stafford nurse did not aspirate in spite of uh, requests from him. So she was asked to or he was asked to and didn't. It's scary for, you, for me to imagine injection without aspiration, as I've seen frank blood twice in 32 years. Now, this is about the, the, what we're talking about. So paediatricians uh, usually get their nurses to do the vaccinations for them. But in his lifetime, I imagine he's done a few thousand. And I've been thinking back on this. I don't, I didn't, I don't really remember exactly. I think I got blood back once giving injections. And I spent a lot of time in, in education. So I was only in clinical practice for about 13 or 14 years, 10 years at the start of my career and three years at the end of it. But I still must have given about a thousand injections. So, you know, if I got blood once back once in a thousand times, and that, that's quite a lot because we're giving out millions of vaccines. Um, Kirk. Uh, it's not a question of is it likely? The real question is, can it happen? I agree completely with you, Kirk. One hundred percent. Kirk goes on over the course of a uh, court. Uh, Kirk's a registered nurse, retired registered nurse. Over the course of a 40 year work history, I've only aspirated blood two or three times, but that is very significant. The point is that, uh, practiced or not, it can happen. The rule is first do no harm. Of course, it is, I agree 100%. And uh, we need to go back to the fundamentals. Now, another commentator said this, I'm not naming them for obvious reasons. Uh, I inject myself with an, if you want to go on the web, on my with videos like you can find them of course and message them it's, 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 these are public domain comments i injected myself with an anabolic steroid and have done so for the past 20 years not commenting on that but we acknowledge the fact that you have my preferred injection site is the deltoid muscle it's a deep intramuscular injection i aspirate and on many occasions i've drawn back blood i would say about one out of every 30 times wow so definitely possibility of um inadvertent intravascular administration there into the deltoid from a commentator gary um writes in i had my wife ask the nurse to aspirate for a third moderna dose blood twice in a row then none on the third try so wow that is unfortunate they got blood twice but it's a good job you aspirated otherwise your wife could have got an intravenous vaccination Elaine, I've been saying this for the last two years. Finally, it's backed up. I'm an NHS nurse. We agree, Elaine. Um, correct technique encourages vaccination is another theme that came out. The first place I went to to get the vaccine refused to aspirate, says Patrick. Then I refused to take the vaccine there. You did get it somewhere else. Uh, Huey, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. I just had my appointment uh, at a vaccination hub. I asked for the needle to be aspirated. Now, bear in mind, these guidelines are not saying 
at least from the national guidelines, they're not saying thou shalt not aspirate. They're saying there's no need to. But many injectors seem to be responding aggressively when I wouldn't even say challenged. I would just say queried in this way. The person who was giving me my injection rolled her eyes, which is not good uh, clinician patient relationships at all. And after a few words said she'd get the manager. Uh, the manager, <laughs> inverted commas, had a piece of paper with the official policy explaining no aspiration is needed. Not saying you can't do it, just saying it's not needed, which of course we disagree with. I told her I understand, but the safest method is to aspirate and that's what I'd like. She said no. I said, well, if you don't, I'll find another GP who will. Uh, she said that's my choice, but they won't aspirate, so I left without my vaccination. This is not what we need. We do not need people leaving without their vaccination. Good suggestion from uh, uh, Credulopathic. Basically, it says just get a thousand volunteers, inject them with saline and see how many you get um, you get blood back on. And as far as I know, that's never been done. Now, Gillian has asked me, uh, can I ask for aspiration when I go for my injection? Hi, John. When I get my booster, can I ask uh, who is uh, going to administer it? Well, the, the question here is, G uh, Gillian, um, is, it your bod is it your body that they're sticking this needle into? If the answer to that question is yes, then the answer to the other question is clearly yes. Obviously, you can ask for that. And the guidelines don't say don't do it. As I understand them, they just say it's not necessary. Jerome wrote a long explanation. Jerome, thank you very much. Cancer and reconstructive surgeon. Now, these people know about re reconstructive surgeon, know about blood vessels more than anyone else in the whole wide world, probably. I've never understood why present... Now, to be fair, Jerome, just go on to say why this is unlikely. Because he says that the blood vessels going into the deltoid are borealized very quickly, turn into like twig-like vessels, usually. But then he says this, he says this. Uh, I've never understood why present day training seems to advise against aspiration prior to intramuscular injection in both medical and nursing courses. I agree. It does no harm to aspirate. I agree. Um, I've seen enough freak events happen over my many years of work that I'd rather not take the chances. And so have I, Jerome. I do not understand the seeming active resistance that some medical and nursing practitioners have when asked by patients to aspirate prior to intramuscular injection. I agree completely. Now, I've gone on for quite a while there, but um, just, just a couple of examples. Healthline there. Um, look them up. I'll give you the references. They, 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 they say check for blood on giving intramuscular injections. If you see blood going into the syringe, it means the tip of the needle is in a blood vessel. If this happens, withdraw the needle and begin again with a new needle and syringe. What's, what's the problem there? And uh, Beth, Beth Israel Institute says something basically fairly similar. And um, I was reminded of this. This is something I wrote a few years ago for a professional nurse. A uh, poster on injections that they asked me to write up. And uh, I wrote uh, this. Let's go in a bit. Have a look at that. Right. A preparation may be delivered into an inappropriate tissue. The syringe is always aspirated before the drug is given. If blood is aspirated before any injection, other than an intravenous injection, the needle is changed and an alternative site is used. So that was uh, that was from me. So many of us agree. Um, the mystery goes on. I am currently trying to, um, well, I am in the process of communicating with various politicians and administrators about this. And um, I'm not going to name names at the moment, but as soon as I get anything back from them, I will um, I, I will uh, share that with you. So there we go. Um, it's a mystery, a bit like the Bermuda Triangle, a bit like an identified aerial phenomenon, a bit like the Loch Ness Monster, a bit like the Yeti. Why on earth aren't we aspirating before we give these vaccines to eliminate that variable and block off that hole in that particular slice of the Swiss cheese? Thank you for watching.